Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. The Bhakti Vedanta players humbly present for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada and the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. The glories of Maharaj Ambarish. Many thousands of years ago, there lived a most exalted and virtuous king called Maharaj Ambarish. He was a most powerful, celebrated devotee of the Supreme Lord Krishna. And although he was the emperor of the entire world and possessed unlimited opulence and prosperity, Maharaj Ambarish did not care for it at all. He knew that attachment to such material opulence, which is temporary and illusory, is a cause of downfall. And therefore, he constantly engaged his senses, mind, and everything he possessed in the service of the Lord. In order to worship the Lord, for one year, Maharaj Ambarish and his queen observed the vow of Ekadashi, fasting completely on that day. In the month of Kartik, after observing that vow for one year, fasting for three nights, and after bathing in the river Jamuna, Maharaj Ambarish performed the bathing ceremony for the deity of Lord Krishna with all paraphernalia. He then dressed the deity with fine clothing, ornaments, and fragrant flower garlands. With great attention and devotion, Maharaj Ambarish worshipped Lord Krishna, and then he satisfied all the Brahmins and guests who had arrived in his palace. After giving away in charity 600 million well-decorated cows, the king sumptuously fed all the Brahmins. At that time, the astrologically auspicious moment for breaking his own fast drew near. Maharaj Ambarish is such a perfect ruler of the people. Isn't it wonderful how he is so absorbed in his service to Sri Krishna? Indeed, why? His mind is always engaged in meditating on the lotus feet of Krishna. And the words he speaks are always relating to the glories of the Lord. Mm. His hands are always cleansing the temple of the Lord. And his ears and hearing the transcendental glories of the Supreme Lord and his eyes and seeing the beautiful deity form of the Lord. And his sense of touch, always engaged in touching the bodies of the devotees. His nose, in smelling the fragrance of Tulasi, offered to Krishna. And his tongue, in tasting Mahapurushan. His legs are always walking through the temples of the Lord. And his head is always bowing down before the Supreme Lord. And all the desires of Maharaj Ambarish are for serving the desires of the Lord. 24 hours a day. Maharaj Ambarish is a pure devotee. His only desire is in serving the Lord and his devotees. Why we must be the most fortunate among men to be able to assist such a pure devotee in his service to the Supreme Lord. Come now, the time to break fast draws near. Let us see if the necessary preparations are ready. False glorification by the Brahmins. <laughs> Maharaj Ambarish. <laughs> Who does he think he is? He's just a puffed up king, entangled in household affairs. He puts on a nice show of religious behavior 
and all his foolish citizens are taken in by it. They actually think he's a great transcendentalist and respect him as if he were God. Fools! They don't even know the meaning of the word. Transcendentalist. Sentimentalist. I'll show them. I'll teach him a lesson he will never forget. Now that you have perfectly worshipped the Supreme Lord and all the Brahmins are satisfied, it only remains for you to break your fast. At this very moment, all the stars are correctly positioned in the sky for this, but only one hour of the suspicious time remains. So we ask you, Maharaj, please immediately break your fast. Indeed, then I shall do so. But first, I would like to thank you for your kindness, O best of the twice-born Brahmins. I am indebted to you for assisting me on this special occasion, as you have done so and so many others. Maharaj, it is our privilege and good fortune that you have allowed us to do so. You are most kind. But in truth, I am very fallen. A wretched householder, engaged in politics, diplomacy, and other materialistic affairs. If it wasn't for the constant guidance of pure-hearted Brahmins like yourselves, who are all my spiritual masters, I would never have had the opportunity to worship the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Maharaj Ambarish, why, you are the most exalted among devotees. You cannot hide your transcendental qualities from us. Your humility and freedom from pride <coughs> only go to prove whether your transcendental position. <coughs> Simply out of duty alone, you act as king of this world. But we know you are not affected by such mundane material designations, such as statesman, householder, because you are fixed in your devotion to Lord Krishna. Come. Let me honor the prashad of the Lord and break the Akadaji fast before the auspicious time is ended. My Lord, I am sorry to disturb you, but the great mystic yogi, the Vasamuni, has arrived at the palace. Show him immediately. Such an elevated sage as the Vasamuni must be shown proper respect. Nah, Ambarish Maharaj. The Vasamuni. We are indeed honored by your presence. Yes, yes. As it is the duty of Brahmins, to travel and enlighten the entangled householders, <laughs> I decided to pay you a visit. <laughs> it is our pleasure. Please, be seated. Ah. Let us serve you. Great sage, will you kindly take some eatables? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I had intended to take my meal here. <laughs> Go and prepare the best feast you've ever made. Nothing is too good for such a holy brahmin. Wait. It's time for my ablutions. Amarish Maharaj, I will first go and bathe in the river Jamuna. Upon my return, I will take my leave. Yes, yes, of course. Everything will be ready on your return. I hope so, Amarish. I hope so. Why, this is completely unexpected. Why has Durvas Muni suddenly appeared? It doesn't matter. He is a holy Brahmin and a great powerful mystic yogi. As king, I must show him proper respect. But Maharaj, this creates a dilemma for you. As you know, it is against religious principles to break fast before your guest has eaten. 
It doesn't matter. I shall simply wait until he returns. And then I shall eat. But Maharaj, time is running out. If you do not break your Ikadishi fast soon, there will be a flaw in the observance of religious principles. Yes. If I break my fast, it'll be an offense towards Dravasa Muni. But if I don't, I will be transgressing religious principles. A dilemma indeed. Maharaj, the time is running out. I have an idea. If one takes water, is that not said to be breaking the fast and also not to be breaking the fast? Why, yes, Maharaj. If you take a little water, this will be sufficient to break your Ikadji fast. And at the same time, the rules in regard to receiving a Brahmin will not be broken. Yes, it's a perfect solution. Come, Maharaj, take water without delay. Time is still auspicious. Me to be a fool, Amrish? Have I offended you in some way? Do you not know that I have great mystic powers? I, yes, I, I know it goes on in distant places and even in people's minds. Yes, even what goes on in people's minds. I don't understand. Alas. <laughs> To see the behavior of this cruel man. He is not a devotee of Lord Vishnu. He's a conceited fool, engrossed in his materialistic activities and his aristocratic position. He considers himself to be as good as God. Just look how he has broken religious principles. <laughs> Amrish Maharaj. You invited me here as your guest. But instead of feeding me, you yourself have eaten first. You fool, you have greatly offended me. And now, now I will teach you a lesson you will never forget.
my lord. Oh, Lord Brahma. I'm being pursued by the blazing disc weapon of Lord Vishnu, the Sudarshan Chakra. Please, help me. Protect me. Otherwise, my life will end this very day. When time comes for this material world to end, all the living entities, including myself, are vanquished by the flick of Lord Vishnu's eyebrows. We are not independent. We simply pay our respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord. Even I, myself, the creator of the universe, pay my respectful obeisances the Supreme Personality of Godhead, without whose grace I can do nothing. You mean, my Lord, you cannot help me? I cannot help you. Then I am doomed. What to do? What to do? <laughs> I know. I know. I shall go to Kailash, the abode of Lord Shiva. Surely he will give me shelter. <laughs> He's more powerful than Lord Brahma anyway. Lord Shiva. I must leave immediately. Sudarshan Chakra approaches again. Demigods, <coughs> oh, I should oh, show Bhutanath. Please, please help me. <coughs> the Rasamuni, do you want something from me? Lord, I am being pursued by the Surasan Chakra. Please help me. still bound by the illusion energy of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. I may be deluded by the misconception of my own greatness. After all, <coughs> what is this universe over which I have some influence? It is but a tiny universe like the rest of the sea, amongst millions of others, wherein so many Brahmas and Shivas reside. My dear son, if you want relief, you should simply approach the Supreme Lord Vishnu. He will certainly be kind enough to bestow all good fortune upon you. You mean go to Vaikuntha? Yes, you should go there at once. <coughs> My Lord, I shall leave for Vaikuntha immediately. I am obliged to you. Sumasan Chakra. 
is approaching again. spiritual realm known as Vaikuntha Dham, where the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan, resides. of the universe, O oh, Supreme Controller, please be merciful unto me. Out of ignorance, I have offended your pure devotee. Please <coughs> forgive me and protect me from the reaction of this offense. My dear Durvasha Muni, I'm not at all independent. What? I'm completely under the control of my pure devotees. How is this possible, my lord? Because my pure devotees have given up everything. Family, riches, friends, relatives. Just to serve me. How then can I neglect? Just as the chaste wife brings her husband under her control through service. Similarly, my pure devotees bring me under their control through pure devotional service. I always reside within the core of the hearts of my devotees. And they always reside in my heart. O Brahmana, please listen to my advice carefully. Out of envy, you have offended Ambrish Maharaj, and therefore your mind has become your greatest enemy. In order to rectify the situation, you should immediately approach Ambrish Maharaj and fall at his lotus feet and ask for forgiveness. If he is pleased with you, there will be peace for you. Thank you, my lord. Out of great envy, I have offended this pure devotee. I will go and beg forgiveness from him.
Oh, Barish Maharaj, please forgive me for all my offenses I have committed. Please protect me, save me. Look, my lord, look. Help me, protect me. and Chakra, thou art fire, thou art the sun and the moon, thou art water, the earth, the sky, and thou art the original vision of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisance unto thee. Please, be merciful to Dervasa Muni. And if I've accumulated any pious activities, or if indeed the Supreme Lord is pleased with me in any way, then may this Brahmin be free from the pain of being burned. Maharaj, you have saved my life. <coughs> Despite all my horrible offenses, you have prayed for my great fortune. Please, please, I am indebted to you, totally. My dear Brahma, I deserve no credit for your deliverance. It is all the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Now please, be seated. And I shall bring you sumptuous prashad. My dear Brahmins, today I have witnessed the greatness of the devotees of the Lord. <laughs> yes, Durvas. There is nothing in the three worlds which can compare to the association of pure devotees. Yes. <coughs> Maharaj Ambarish had fasted for one whole year, thinking he had committed some offense against you. No. More offenses I have committed again. Here's your prashad. I hope you're satisfied. I am satisfied. By your mercy, I am fully satisfied. Please, come now. Come and sit down and take prashad. I insist. I have made you fast long enough. Maharaj Amrish. I thought you were an ordinary human being. And out of great arrogance, I tried to punish you. <laughs> punish you. But now, now I have learnt my lesson. And now I understand that you are the most exalted devotee of the Lord. <coughs> Simply by seeing you touching your lotus feet and speaking with you, I have become greatly pleased. Your spotless character and your glories will be heard forevermore throughout the three worlds. Why, I myself will travel throughout the three worlds and preach the glories of the Lord's pure devotees. 